Right, so um, why cloud accounting? This has become very topical now with the introduction um, of making tax digital that HM Revenue and Customs um, at the end of January um, confirmed is, is going to continue and will go ahead as planned with the first um, people going into the scheme from April 2018. So it's not long, so basically got a year for the first lot of people to go in. Now, the first um, lot of taxpayers are going to be landlords and sole traders. And they've decided that they're all going to start with maybe the most difficult um, people to, to get onto the making tax digital. Um, and I think from le reading the commentary, the main reason is that's where the biggest black hole of tax is where landlords and sole traders are not either declaring their income or declaring it correctly. So that's why they've started with those guys. Um, there is good news. But if your turnover is below 10,000 a year, there is an exemption. Um, you don't have to comply with making tax digital. However, um, this limit is up for discussion. Again, Asian Revenue have come back and said, we will review this exemption, um, but Personally, I don't think they will change this um, because that will catch a lot of people um, out. If, if there was there was talk that they were going to raise it to the back limit of eighty three thousand pounds, which I think will take too many people out the net. So I imagine this ten thousand um, pounds exemption limit will stay. And what they want to do, which is very brave of them, within two years, that they want all businesses by twenty twenty to be filing quarterly returns using the cloud-based bookkeeping system. Um, it'd be interesting to see if that actually comes <laughs> comes to fruition with um, April 18 starting with the landlords and sole traders. So also what came about from the consultation was that um, originally they wanted it all to be uploaded by a cloud-based system, but now they have um, relented a little bit and said, yeah, we can take spreadsheets. However, this spreadsheet has got to be linked to a cloud-based system. So you think, well, I might as well go straight to the cloud-based system rather than messing about with spreadsheets and then uploading it. So um, they've sort of given up, given in a little bit, but a lot of the software houses aren't too pleased because they're gonna have to go back and rewrite some of the software to enable it to work with spreadsheets. So that'd be interesting. So I, I did have a client phoning me out he's got maybe 10 properties all on spreadsheets. So, and he's quite meticulous with his um, records. There, I would say, look, continue with your spreadsheets, and then hopefully the link with the cloud-based system up to the revenue shouldn't be too too bad. I imagine you would have to follow certain templates, so it might mean that you need to rejig the spreadsheet slightly. But that, will, I think, will be easier than having to learn a, a new system and then go and, and using that rather than the spreadsheets. So, as I said, quarterly information is going to be uploaded to HM Revenue and Customs. Um, very similar to the VAT return if you're back registered. Um, but what it will do is not just a form, it will be all the transactional data that sits behind that they will be able to see as well. Um, there, there, there is rumours, well, I think it's, it will happen if you're back registered, you will not need to file a back return as well. It will be within the same um, upload to the revenue, so you won't need to do two. Um, and then there's going to be like a fifth return at the end of the year to catch anything else that hasn't been covered. Um, this is quite interesting. So they've, they've increased the cash basis um, turnover limit. So very simply, um, when we do accounts for the revenue, it's all done on an invoice basis, like an accruals basis is what they call it. So basically, it's, it's not based on whether how much you're receiving in the bank or how much you're paying out. It's all done on an invoice basis. But they have turned around and said if your turnover is below 150 a year, you can actually use your cash basis, which does help um, when you're doing your bookkeeping system um, records and updating it because you can just keep your records based on what's going in and out of your bank account. So you don't particularly need to enter invoices. The way it's in and out of your bank account will form your accounts, whereas now, that, that doesn't form your accounts. Now it's your based on your invoices and your maxed invoices to, to what's being paid and it's a little bit more complicated. So that's helped. And I would imagine a lot of people will be using that, um, especially with the benefit that 
the cloud-based systems now you can have automatic bank feeds working which i'll explain shortly where those bank feeds will come straight in to zero without you having to type anything in from your bank account so that's quite interesting so very quickly um <laughs> you can't ignore making tax digital it's gonna it's gonna happen so maybe one of the deadlines might be extended but from, from the way the consultation's gone so many people objected to it and had their views and basically the revenue did ignore a lot of them and just pressing ahead with this so you do need to um, make changes now um, rather than the wait to a month before April 18 if you're affected then um, and get things put in place um, to make life easier and that's where we're obviously here to help and make sure that happens. Right, so this is quite interesting. Um, I, I, when I was doing research for this, I found some um, information from the revenues guidance. Um, so these are the four foundations of making tax digital. And this is from the revenues own um, consultation. Um, this is what their aim is. Um, they want obviously to present this as a benefit, which I find really weird that they call in taxpayers customers now. Um, I can't see what benefit you get by buying paying your tax, but okay, they're now calling everyone customers. Um, so basically, they're going to collate, collate all the information directly from the banks, from the employers, P60s, from building sites, other departments. You don't need to enter all this information on a tax return. And also means taxpayers can go online um, and know that the information there is correct because it's coming straight from directly from the banks, for example. Um, so the second um, foundation is that they want tax in real time. So what they don't want to wait people to wait to the end of the year to know how much tax they owe. They want people to know as they go along in real time um, so they can plan and budget and pay their tax maybe monthly, quarterly rather than annually. They want a single financial account. Um, at the moment, it is a pain trying to find out where your liabilities are. There's so many different places it's held, but now by 2020, they want um, very much like your online banking. You can go in and see exactly where you are from your tax and your accounts online. Um, and they want obviously to, to interact digitally with, with you um, and keeping the records up to date um, and basically making sure that they're using the technology um, to its, its fullest. So that's the revenues point of view. And what, again, whilst I was doing the research, this was quite interesting. They've actually given some case studies. Um, so bear with me whilst I click, do some clicks. Um, but this is quite interesting, the case studies that, there you go, so you should be able to all see that. So there's four case studies here. Um, this is the simple one about self um, an employed teacher, which I won't really go into, but the second one is quite interesting. You've got a self-employed person. So a self-employed gardener um, has just gone over the back threshold and two employees. So it explains what he has to do now. Um, and he's got to get his accountant to tell him how much to put aside for tax. He doesn't really understand his tax position and that's confidence to, to grow his business. And very boldly, <laughs> the revenue have said, this is how making tax digital will help Richard. Um, you can see his digital tax account uses information on his software. You can see it all real time. Um, you can set employees and register new services online. Um, this is quite interesting. HMRC signpost Richard to interactive guidance and sends him relevant personalised messages, which is a bit worrying. Um, and also, he can make a single payment quarterly to cover his tax and back which is quite interesting rather than annually. Um, the next one, some a retired person, but I thought example four would be quite interesting. You've got a director um, of a small company, employs people and so forth. Again, he keeps his records on a spreadsheet. Um, his accountant prepares a CT return and so forth. And here he says that, which is, again is quite bold, Dave chooses a third party record keeping app to help them stay up to date. I don't know what apps are out there that can actually deal directly with these type of things, but um, maybe something's coming. 
the app saves Dave's accountant, supplies Dave's accountant with the company's records. Um, and this is what the revenue are trying to trying to get to, um, as you can see. Whether they'll get there by in three years' time, I don't know. But um, this is where where they're out they're at with the um, examples, which is quite interesting. So if I take them away and go into the next screen, right? So making tax digital. So I didn't go into huge detail because there's still a lot of not consultation, but we're still waiting for quite a lot of confirmation from the revenue how this is going to actually work. Um, but we, as a practice, have decided just to warn clients, let them be aware of it, and start thinking about changing over if they're using manual books or spreadsheets uh, or even desktop-based bookkeeping systems. So these are the five main players in the market at the moment, um, and we can support all, we can support three of them. So we're looking to partner up with Zero, QuickBooks Online, i.e. QBO or Cashflow. There are, are others, but we're not too keen on them, Free Agent and Sage One. Believe it or not, we have looked at the Sage One or Sage Live, I think they call it, um, and it's, it's just not as, as good as the others. Sage just have not invested um, a lot of money into this cloud um, system and philosophy like Zero and the others. Um, and we have just sort of heard recently that Zero and now have more subscribers than, than Sage desktop which is just phenomenal considering Zero have been only going five or six years. But we can support all these. These, these three, Zero QuickBooks, Cashflow, are very similar. Um, it's just the, the layout looks slightly different, but in, in essence, they do the same thing. Um, and, it, we, and it was down to you. So I, so, but when I do this presentation, I'm, I'm looking at Zero because that's the one that the majority of our clients and they're the one, that's the one that we recommend as the best to help you. And what I think will happen is, as the next year um, goes by, more players to the market will come. So I think there'll be smaller versions or light versions of zero and cash flow for the smaller business. Um, there might be people coming into the market offering a free bookkeeping system for a certain amount of transactions. Um, and then you're going to have to then um, upgrade to the, the the, the larger version if you want to use it. So I'm just holding fire um, with what's going on um, and choosing and choosing a bookkeeping system. There will be definitely others coming to the market. So part of the presentation was obviously to show the time savings using Zero or a cloud, any other cloud-based system. Um, most of them got bank feeds, as I said, bank feeds as it goes to hit your you got a few options as it hits your bank account your feeds automatically into zero so you don't have to re-enter everything from your bank statement or you just got to refresh the feeds in zero which will then collect the data and then push it through into zero you can set bank rules up so and i'll show you live shortly um how these all work and how easy it is um, to set up and to to, to follow Bank rules, so if you're paying BT every quarter, you set up a bank rule that every time it sees a BT payment, it knows where to post it and what to do. And basically you've got to press a button to get it into the bookkeeping system. Zero files enables you to upload invoices to the system so you don't have to put file anything and you've got a soft copy within Zero. Um, you've got the add-on marketplace, again within Zero, where there are 500, 600 odd add-on partners to help you um, make run your business more efficiently and again I'll show you some examples of this you can send out reminders to customers that they haven't paid your bill that can be done automatically within the system um, and that can be done by email zero has got a very simple stock system so if you have got stock and you want to track what's coming in going out the stock system is pretty pretty um, pretty good for a simple system and um, again I'll show you um, how that works and also being on the cloud it makes the whole thing mobile so you can do a lot of this well the majority of this work on your phone and your tablet um, if you're not if it so this doesn't mean you're stuck um, working on a PC so they're the time savings and you can see that could help help you quite significantly so what I want to do is now going to 
I want to go into zero, so I'm just going to pull across zero demo company. Um, so really quickly, I'm just going to fly around zero um, and, and just cover some of those points that I've just uh, mentioned um, with the bank rules and the bank fees and so forth. So you got your, this is your dashboard. So this is what your dashboard will look like as you go into the zero. Um, and this is basically pulling out your bank, the summary of your bank account. You can have a watch list. You can keep an eye on any expenses or sales that are happening through in your business, how much is owed to you, how much you need to pay, and any expenses that you might put through. And the beauty of this, you can edit you can edit this, you can move things around, you can save the changes, which is quite cool. Um, so that's the dashboard. So bank feeds. So the way the bank feeds work is that literally, if I click on here, if I click on the reconcile 30 items, so literally this is how the bank feeds work. So everything on the left hand side is a duplicate of your bank statement. Everything on the right, you need to perform or do something to get it into the zero bookkeeping system. So the bank feeds, as you can see here, these are coming in automatic as it hits the bank account, it hits zero. So everything on the left means it's just a duplicate of your bank statement. You haven't done anything until you into this bookkeeping system until you do something on the right. Um, if you can't get the bank feeds working, you can actually import bank statements from a CSV file or other um, formats um, and import it in here so then it, it looks like it's come from your bank. So most, as I said, software, software um, online cloud systems do that. So what I'm going to do is show you some bank rules and maybe just set up one up or two up just to show you the benefit of how bank rules work. So as you can see, these all and you can see some common um, payments, Cooper Street Bakeries is being paid a couple of times. You go to the next page, you can see that Central City Parking's been paid once, twice there. So rather than having to go in each time to enter the details, you can set up a rule. So if I show you how easy it is and the effect of setting up the rule, just gives you a flavour of um, how it works. So you can do any text field, contains central city parking, and you enter the details there. Right, so you've got to give it a description, because this is then putting it into the bookkeeping system. So it could be travel, national, it could be 20% VAT. And here, the region and salesman, um, I'll just quickly explain that you can actually do like departments and you can track these um, items in zero. So you can get some really good reports on how that salesman's performing or how that region's performing. Um, in this example, it could be that you know that the city parking is just for the east side region and you can put that in there and it'll come out in all your reports. Five and six and seven are pretty standard, don't really need to do much. Um, and it's already pre-populated number seven. So then you save, if I've done it correctly, you know it's been done properly because now can you see on the right hand side, it's now pre-populated that and all you've got to do is press OK and that's in the bookkeeping system. And now, now can you see every central city parking is now done the same. Yeah, so that's simply how you do the bank rules. So that's why I, it was important to explain the cash turnover limit of £150,000 because you can now basically create your accounts and tax returns by just posting, just by dealing with the transaction in and out of your bank account, set loads of rules up. Um, obviously, checks, if you if anyone is still right checks, you would have to put in the details because you wouldn't know what the checks are. But most people now use online banking and using the debit cards and there's hardly any checks. Um, right, so that was why that, that's important. If you're over 150, you don't use the cash accounting system. And then as you can see, can you see it's then brought in on the right hand side, it's, it's looking to match these payments against maybe any invoices that are sitting in the system that 
um, are due to be paid. And can you see that the Wilson, that 2nd of October invoice, 49.90, is more than likely it's going to be paid on the next day or on the debit card or on the 3rd of October. And you're now matching that payment against that invoice in the system. And you press OK and it disappears. So again, as simple as that. Um, I've actually put in here um, how easy that is. Um, I've got a payment in all bar one. And what I'll do is um, just quickly show you how to enter an invoice um, using the files and how that matches against the payment. Um, so you go on the folders tab. This is where files is kept. So basically you can upload, take pictures of any invoices that you need to put in the system. So if I click on that, you will see an invoice from all one that's been taken on a, on a camera in, in, in here. So what's quite neat, recently they changed this, that you can now create a bill, they put a bill straight from that invoice. If you can see the screen will now split, and you can enter, I think you can still turn around from there, so you can still enter the details um, on there. So that's the 19th of November. Um, entertaining quantity one, 93 pounds. Entertaining business, right, it defaults VAT, but as you all know, you can't have VAT on, on entertaining. And basically, that's as quick to enter an invoice straight from there. You approve it, you can save it and go back for it, go back to it later and have a look. You can actually save as a draft, save for continuing. There's quite a few options on the save, um, but here I'm going to actually approve it. So now I've now entered that invoice into the system. And can you see they're actually on the system now is is linked the actual um, invoice to it so then before again if i've done this properly if i go back to have a look at my reconcile items go to that last page i should now see there you go so now i've entered the invoice it now knows it now is looking and seeing that payment on the 20th of march is it that one yes we know that's paid that invoice and you're okay so now that's in the system so you've got the invoice in the system and now you've paid the invoice um through there so i've done quite a bit so i've showed you how the files work i showed you the bank feeds um let me just go back to my presentation and what else what else i needed to cover so the other thing was um invoice reminders which is quite nice that if you're then sending out sales invoices and you can see your weight and payment for here you got 24 weight and payment if I click on that can you see I've now put the invoice reminders on um, and it shows you if if you've sent reminders or not and they've, they've been sent or not um, on, on this actual dashboard um, to actually do, to look at that and look at your settings of how the invoices um, you go to just click around here and you can see you can set some form some um, commands up and dates to your sending out when the invoice is 14 days overdue in an email 21 days and even I can set one up very simply 30 days you then create your email and save it and it's now created another um, option to send it out which is quite nice you can put in amounts you don't want to send them out before and who the system is so that again very quickly just shows you how you can be um, makes credit control efficient um, the only thing you've got to be aware of your booking has to be pretty up to date you've got to be on it virtually every day otherwise those emails are going to be sent out and it could be that the customer has paid you and your bookkeeping is not up to date. So you just got to watch that. But it's a good habit to get into to make sure 
you, you are up to date. Um, so that's it, invoice reminders. Right, I'm going to have to go back to my previous screen because I cannot remember. Um, Sorry about this. Where what else I need is cover. So, so I've done zero files, like the add-on marketplace and stock. So if I go very quickly to zero's website and go to their marketplace, this basically is what I was talking about, the add-on market um, and the add-on people. But support that work with zero so you can see that they've split this into different parts of the business that will help you so for example if you're i know you, you tracking staff time maybe you've got um, workers out there um maintenance maybe so you can go look at see what else works with zero and t-sheets works really well with time tracking employee schedules there's a whole load of time tracking options there um Another really useful is um, e-commerce. So if you've got now a lot of people doing e-commerce online, using maybe taking payments from Amazon and eBay and so forth. Again, there's loads of these here that will help you um, run the business more efficiently. Another one that we look at is um, payments is quite cool as well. So if you want to take payments online, go cardless, very popular. And you can see the reviews here as well. Stripe, people have been using to accept credit card payments um, online, easy to set up, and PayPal works really well. So there's other, other businesses here that work online. Um, as you can see, there's a whole raft. Um, billing expenses, this is quite nice that we use quite a lot. For our clients, we use Receipt Bank and um, Auto Entry, where, as you, when I showed you posting the invoice um, from the picture, the, using this bit of software, you can actually scan it and pre-populate all the all the information without you having to actually type anything in. Um, which, if you've got a large purchase ledger or a large amount of invoices that you need to enter, th these systems work really well. Um, I think Zero Files works as good as these guys for maybe the smaller business where you haven't got the volume of purchase invoices. So that's the marketplace. Um, just that's on the Zero website, you just go to more add-on marketplace and it's all there, which is quite um, useful to know. Um, the simple stock system. So if I now um, show you um, how the stock system works um, within Zero. I think that'd be quite um, interesting as well. So the stock system is under the inventory tab, they call it inventory um, rather than stock. Um, but again, you just create your, your item codes. You can create new items really simply. Um, and whether you track these items, so tracking is basically you want to track your stock. And it will actually give you um, a warning if you're trying to sell items that actually aren't in stock um, and it will say that you're selling it <laughs> and the system's not up to date. Um, again, you can get some really good reports um, well worth looking at if you have very simple, maybe low volume stock. If you're adding bits to, to components and stuff like that, it just it won't work that well. You need to then go into the adult marketplace and look for bigger um, stock systems. But um, a few clients use this and, and like it because it is so simple, um, which we all, we all like. So that was the stock system and the last working on the road. So what I thought I would do is, is show a quick video, hopefully this link works. Um, This is a nice video that Zero have produced about working mobile. Stay on top of cash flow at a glance. Check out your bank balances and the status of your sales invoices. 
categorize your bank transactions according to zero automatically and match the payments to your invoices and bills. We made it easy to keep your financials accurate and up to date, maybe even a bit addictive. Create an invoice while you're still on the job. Even attach files to it, like a contract or a photo of the work done. Send it straight to your customer and they can pay online with the click of a button. You can easily capture receipts on the go. On the app, take a photo of the receipt and key in the rest of the details. Select if you need to be reimbursed or if it was paid for from the business bank account. And the receipt will always be right there at your fingertips attached to the transaction in zero. Access all your business contacts in one place and get up to speed by reviewing the client's history and notes. See where they're located on the map and get in touch to arrange your next meeting. Because Xero is online, you can use it straight from the browser on all your devices, like your MacBook. From the web app, you have a full range of features to manage your business. Quotes, online invoicing, purchase orders, bills, payroll, and more. And there's a range of easy to customize reports to instantly get a real-time view of how your business is performing. Even collaborate online with an accounted or bookkeeper right in the software. Zero is beautiful accounting software that puts your business at your fingertips, at home, in the office, or on the go. All right, so um, again, just shows you where how different it is to desktop bookkeeping systems and even spreadsheets, you just can't get that, that sort of functionality. So there, the time savings using um, a cloud-based bookkeeping system. Advanced reporting. So I, I wanted to just quickly show you the, the other, ben the main benefit, one of the benefits of going cloud-based is that the, the reports that you can get and the information you can get real time. Um, whereas in the past we've struggled to get that information to clients where their, their, their records are so far behind uh, or the data is not up to date. Um, but this now has given us the ability to enable us to, to produce some really great great reports. Um, here's an example of um, an example of a hospitality business. Um, it's just an example, but you can see that as well as financial data, you can have non-financial data um, in, brought into the system um, via spreadsheet. So again, very important that uh, this hotel needs to know the rooms available, the room revenue per available room, occupancy rates, the beverage rates, the food revenue that's coming in, um, total revenue. There's just plenty of, of data that now we can produce. And because this is now done automatically, once zero is up to date, these reports then are generated um, straight straight away without having to really um, wait for any time. So I thought this was quite important to show the functionality and what you can get from from um, from the cloud-based system. Also, you can create alerts. Now, I've, tr met, I've tried to do this, but it's just not working without having live data in here. But basically, you can create alerts to say certain um, certain criteria. So, for example, if your bank, you want to be alerted if, um, if you've got some information here, um, some alerts that we've done before. For example, if your bank balance falls below a certain level or your bank account hits a certain level, you want to be notified, you can be notified leading up to that figure, um, but just having that information working in the background, I think is really important. So that gives you, this bit of software enables you to do that. And also, I think which is really, really useful is that you can start creating forecast scenarios, which you can see we've created quite a few for our clients here. But basically, a click of a button, you can create forecasts based on the information that's already in zero for last year and then you can add or or change percentages see what your figures gonna look like for next year really quick um, and really efficient by using the data that's already in zero 
um, and ready to go. Um, so that's, I thought I'd just quickly touch on that and show you the functionality. And obviously, you've got the ability, the ability to consolidate. So you might have two or three branches, two or three businesses, and you want to have a consolidated view. Again, the old way was, took too long and it was really expensive to get that data to you. But now, using these, these types of um, programs, you can create that information really quickly, um, which is really cool. So that was the reporting. So we are here to help. Um, so I just wanted to show you that um, our website that's dedicated to um, the cloud. So you can see we've actually got the reasons why you choose us um, compared to other firms, and also the six steps to success of using cloud-based systems. And as you can see, we've now um, put together um, packages to, to suit to suit your needs. Um, so if you want to have a look at the website, there's more details on there um, of how we can help you. But it includes an eight-week enablement service. So we know that at the beginning, we need to, it's really difficult at the beginning if, no, if someone's not really used to using this type of system. We've got a dedicated client manager who will go online, look at your zero account if you're using auto entry or a seat bank, or any of those add-ons, make sure that's working properly just to be there to make sure the bank feeds are working. Sometimes they do fall down. Um, there might be 60 reconciled items that you haven't looked at for a couple of weeks, just to give you a bit of a nudge and just make sure you're doing everything properly. We can give training to suit your needs. So we've done, we do training on Skype. We've got clients come here for training. We go there for training. Um, we do half hour training sessions the next week just check you've done it properly and then go on to the next sessions. We've got a proper plan, based, again, based on your needs. We have found that every client's needs are so different. Um, some will do just raise the sales invoices in zero and not even match the payments. Some will like reconciling the bank account and some don't want to touch it. So it just depends on your, your requirements and the time that you have. Payable monthly, no contracts. So you, and the same with Zero or any of these cloud-based systems, you can actually stop um, stop using it. The only, the only issue you've got is that if you stop using it, that data's gone. Um, but we, as agents, can recover that data. So we just send an email to them, and they put us back, put that information back on our system, and you can collate that data. Um, and obviously, it's MCD compliant. Um, I thought we'd put all the, the guys in the office um, who here help with the cloud. Um, there's a various different levels of qualifications here. Some, some, most of these are AAT qualified, um, and then some are doing their ACCA qualified. So all accountants to know um, all about the tax requirements and the accounts requirements, as well as being zero certified to know the software really well. Um, so what I'm going to do is. I'll have a quick look at some of the questions. I've got two questions that have popped up. So, um, oh, <laughs> that's a nice question. So, miss the first couple of minutes. Please advise if the slides are available. So, I'm actually recording this um, presentation. So, um, Lauren in the office will then email people <coughs> um, and let them know when it's live. So, yeah, this will be available afterwards. Um, so, David. Um, Thank you. Interesting presentation. A few questions. Um, number one, doing accounts in the cloud, does HM Revenue have access to it all at all times? No. So the way I believe it's going to work is that you will upload the information and the data quarterly. So it will be that those transactions that they will get to see on a quarterly basis. Um, that, that there is talk that for the smaller businesses, they're going to have like three lines, sales, purchases, and profit. And, you, and there won't be data backing up, but that's from the much smaller client. Um, so they, they won't have access. They can't go into your zero and look at what you're doing. Um, so, so hopefully that's answered that question. Um, a lot of last minute adjustments. Yeah, so again, I was reading the commentary that they're not looking, they're not going to audit and look at the quarterly figures. Um, for like inquiries or things like that. Um, they did say that 
they will continue looking annually. So that fifth return at the end of the year, which will basically deal with any journals and any changes and any adjustments that you need to put through. They said that they will look at it as a whole in the year. Um, it'll be quite interesting how that's going to pan out because, as you know, a lot of directors draw their income via dividends. So <laughs> we then you make at the end of the year look at the adjustment to see if that's right tax efficiently. Now I think we're going to have to look at that quarterly. Um, I wouldn't want to risk leaving that to the end of the year and then it gets pulled for an inquiry. So I think it will change the way um, you look at the bookkeeping and the accounts and tax planning. Um, can Zero run several company accounts from a single bank account? Um, I don't think it can. So you would have to open, yeah, with Zero, a bit different to some of the desktop systems. If you, for each company you want to have a bookkeeping system, you have to buy a new subscription. If you've got three companies, you'll need three Zero subscriptions. Um, you've got to be careful with the bank accounts because with the bank feeds, um, I have seen this as well, that a bank feed will only work to one company. You can't then have that bank feed going to another company. So you, you just got to make sure that um, when you go when you go live with it, that you've got the right bank accounts with the right feeds and so forth. Um, so you just got to watch that. Um, and oh, Miranda, thank you, great presentation. Well, that's very nice of you. Um, that was before I actually started the presentation, but there you go. Um, obviously, super great now that you've actually listened to it. Um, that's really. There's no other questions. Um, I've done that in 45 minutes, which is pretty cool. Um, what I'd imagine will happen is that as more information comes out making Touch Digital, I'll be doing more of these presentations just to keep people abreast of the changes um, with with that. Um, I'm sure there will be loads coming through, um, but the, the, the only advice I would say is do not leave it to the last minute. Um, if you leave it to the last minute, it's going to be an absolute disaster because <laughs> there's two, there's a lot to take on board and to get your head round. So what we're suggesting, either now start it, if you've got the time, at least six months, if you're caught by the April 18, if you're a landlord or a sole um, trader, you really need to start thinking about it after the summer, um, get maybe a couple of quarters behind your belt so you know what you're doing, and then you're off and running without too much of a hiccup. Um, other businesses, the larger ones, I would start thinking about moving away from your desktop system um, and start, yeah, thinking about moving away and into into a cloud-based system um, right sooner rather than later. I know 2020 is a way off, but if there's a lot, a lot of needs to be done within your existing systems, then um, you need to start thinking and planning now. Um, just checking any more questions. Um, yeah, Tanvir. Um, yeah, so as I said, we offer training on the cloud, on cloud accounting software. That's just part of what we do. As I said, we can do the training via Skype, um, which works really well because we can obviously share screens. We can do it in the office or we can come to you. Um, and also what we try to do, we don't do like half, try not to do half day sessions. There's too much to take up, take in. So we try to do it in bite size um, session, maybe an hour, a couple of hours at the most. Work on the system, check it in a couple of weeks time and then go on to the next um, topic um, within Zero. So yeah, um, the training is all part of what we do. Okay, um, thanks for listening. Um,